Today, I have the humble opportunity to introduce very special guests back to the State Senate. Today, we will be rededicating the Roseanne Vujic Hearing Room, Hearing Room 240, in honor of the 42 trailblazing women senators who have served in the California State Senate. With us today are Senators Didi Alpert, <laughs> Senator Elaine Alquist, <laughs> Senator Ellen Corbett, <laughs> Senator Denise, Duce Denise Duchesne, <laughs> Senator Noreen Evans, Senator Liz Figueroa, who also is the first Salvadorian American to ever be an elected official in the California State Legislature as well. We also have us with us today is Senator Sharon Runner. <laughs> Senator Christine Kehoe. <laughs> and with us, Madam Ambassador, Madam Congresswoman, but first and foremost, Madam State Senator, and the first African-American woman to ever be a state senator in the history of the California legislature, Madam Ambassador, Madam State Senator, Diane Watson. <laughs> now, we are very happy that they were able to attend today's special rededication but also like to recognize all of the women senators who have served uh, in the California State Senate. Marion Bergenson, Martha Scutia, Teresa Hughes, Benny Carnett, Lucy Kalea, Sheila Kuehl, Barbara Lee, Carol Migdon, Rebecca Morgan, Jenny Oropesa, Deborah Ortiz, Gloria Romero, Hilda Solis, Nell Soto, Jackie Sp Spear, Norma Torres, Roseanne Vujic, Mimi Walters, Patricia Wiggins, and Kathy Wright. And, of course, Madam Senator, as well as colleagues, those serving today. That is Patricia Bates, Jean Fuller, Kathleen Galgiani, Lonnie Hancock, Hannah Beth Jackson, Connie Leva, Carol Liu, Holly Mitchell, Janet Nguyen, Fran Pavley, and Lois Wolk. All of these women, all of these women have accomplished great things for the people of California. They devoted their careers to fighting poverty, promoting education equity, tackling climate change and environmental degradation, strengthening the safety net, reducing recidivism, advocating for homeowner rights, privacy protections, minority and LGBT rights, healthcare access, governmental oversight, and dozens and dozens of other issues. Now, these 42 women exemplify public service, and each of their careers is indicative of advancements towards gender equality. Now, to provide some context for how far we have come, you need to only look back 39 years. 39 years when Roseanne Vujic was elected as the first female senator in 1976. It took 65 years, 65 years after women won the right to vote in California in 1911. Women of California won that right through struggle back in 1911. And still then, it took 65 years to elect the first woman senator back in 1976, and that is Senator Rose, Roseanne Vujic. Now, after 127 years, 127 years after the establishment of the State Senate in 1849 for women to actually be represented in this prestigious August body. Now, Senator Vujic, the, an unassuming woman from the Central Valley, defeated an incumbent, an incumbent assemblyman, to the surprise of many. She paved the way for all the women who have followed in her footsteps, 
one bell ring at a time. Now you see Senator Vujic would keep this bell, this very same bell, at her desk. And she would ring it whenever her fellow senators would address the collective members of the Senate as gentlemen. So each time when the presiding officer, a male, would address his colleagues on this August body as gentlemen, she would get up and she would ring this bell as a very clear reminder, as a very powerfully symbolic reminder that it is not a body of just men, but is a body of a very powerful woman, a trailblazer in Roseanne Buich. And again, she was a woman who set the pathway as a reminder that the chamber again was no longer exclusively male. Now, before her election in 1976, there was very little diversity in the state legislature. The vast majority of members were white males with only a handful of people of color serving as senators. And again, it took 127 years for women to be represented in this body. As shameful as that historical fact may be, we are thankful for all of the women senators who have, who have since then served this great house. These individuals and their accomplishments are proof of why we must strive for a body that is truly representative of the people it serves. These women, irrespective of their political affiliation, serve as a role model for girls and women across the state. And that is why, oops, and that is why I am proud to announce, that's Roseanne right there. And that's why I'm proud to announce the Roseanne Vujic hearing room will now feature the pictures of all the great women senators who have served in this chamber. Room 2040 will be a reminder of their important contributions to this state, but also of the need to progress towards a more inclusive body. Senators, Madam Senators, for those who took the time to grace us with your presence to come up to the state capitol, your state capitol, where you led this body with trailblazing legislative policy, we thank you. We thank you for coming today to rededicate Roseanne Buich room. For those who could not attend today, we thank you. And to the women senators present here today, we thank you for what you do every single day in moving forward policy that has an impact, a great impact on all individuals, but especially being a role model to young girls and women across the state of California. So colleagues, I ask you immediately after our floor session, if you could please join us, room 2040, we will rededicate Roseanne Vujic room. We'll have the pictures as a powerful reminder of the women who came before those here today and the women who are present today and a future call for all other young women who one day aspire to be state senators. Please join me in welcoming our esteemed senators back to their home, the California State Senate. Welcome, welcome to our colleagues, our mentors, our friends. Senator Fuller. I'd like to add on just a moment. First, I'd like to thank our pro tem, Kevin DeLeon. This is very meaningful for all of us. It's a moment we can all share together and feel very proud and successful. But the first um, thing that I would also like to say is that as the first Senate Republican woman elect, I'm very, very pleased I could not pass up this moment to say to all of you who have, we've all been friends somewhere along the way on the Women's Caucus Comeback meetings, you've been great mentors. We've had a lot to learn from each other on our dinners in the evenings, our soup, yes, our super dinners that we had. We've learned a lot, we've had a lot of debate, and I'm very, very pleased today to be able to, to be here and honor you. And I'm very pleased that our pro tem has taken the time to put the pictures up in the Roseanne Vujic room. In addition, though, I'd like to call attention that in the 1980s, there were 13 female legislators. In the 1990s, 
there was also a strong representation with 41 female legislators. In the 2000s, we hit a high of 42 female legislators. And currently, there are 30 female legislators. So women, you're out there. We need to keep working. And the, the shining light that you brought us to at this point, we need to make it shine a little brighter. Also, I'd like to make note that Senator Marian Bergleson was the first woman to serve in both the California State Assembly and the California State Senate. She was a member from 1978 to 1995 and represented Orange County. So thank you for, for bringing us forward. And I think we're going to all benefit from spending some time with each other today and hopefully in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Fuller. <laughs> Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Madam President. I, I rise as a member of the California Legislative Black Caucus to acknowledge once again the significance of State Senator Diane Watson. Not only was she the first black woman elected to the Senate, but she is the longest serving woman to have served in the Senate from 1979 to 1998. And in our numerous debates here on the floor, when we de debate Title IX or uh, my seatmate's discussion around the value of arts education for young women in particular, we, we talk about the importance of role models. And I have to say, as a native Angelino growing up in Los Angeles, to see a woman of my similar height <laughs> who was taking the world by storm, it was an amazing opportunity for a young girl from Crenshaw District, Lamert Park, to see the possibilities, to see the possibilities. So when, you looked, when I looked at the Senate, when I looked at the composition of the Senate, to see someone who looked like me, um, as young women experience today when they're here in the gallery, we all know that we are living role models. You never know when your mere presence here can spark an interest and motivate a young woman, specifically through this month, Women's History Month, to absolutely reach for the stars. So Senator Watson, on behalf of Black Caucus, we acknowledge you. Not only were you the first, you are the, the, the grand dom of the Senate, having been the longest serving woman senator. Thank you very much, Senator Mitchell. And Senator Nielsen. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, it was my honor to be elected to the Senate four years after Roseanne Vujicic blazed this trail for women. And in the same class as Diane Watson, a great honor serving with her. Must speak a moment to Roseanne. From that great Central Valley from where I hailed, Dinuba, her home, and where she farmed was only a few miles from Sanger, where I was raised and farmed myself. We had much in common, but over the years, our paths never crossed until we came here. And then we became colleagues and allies. To avoid the bell, and I don't think it was ever called on me, but you'll notice yet this day, I always address ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. That trained me early on. I got into that habit. It's kind of a respectful way to do it, but I always say ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. And it is a respectful way. Roseanne commended respect, commanded respect. Just her very countenance and being. She was a problem solver. She was forceful. She fought for the agricultural industry. And every time I sit in that room, I think about her and I say a prayer for her. Always delighted in how she had her brother Willie around all the time. He was quite, a, quite an interesting personality and he kind of kept the farm up while Roseanne was doing her duties here. But she was one of those representatives who never ever forgot who she was where she came from, or who she represented. Later, during my years as Republican leader of the Senate, I was honored to have brought in, on my watch, the first Republican senators, Senators Morgan and Senators Bergeson, who have brought so much to this House, and the good share have been Republicans, been a part of both these bodies. And 
it's appropriate that, uh, and thank you, Senator De Leon, for having a room, the Roseanne room, and I assure you Roseanne would not mind the good company there because she did blaze that trail. And I must say, in conclusion, it makes me feel rather good as a product of rural California that rural California produced Roseanne, the first senator, who was a woman. But we had one of the pioneer assemblywomen, women, Pauline Davis from Northern California. And she was quite a terror. All good leaders, all appropriate to be acknowledged here today. Democrat and Republican, all credits to the people of the state of California and the people that they represent. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Block. Thank you, Madam President. I stand to share my own experience. I'm for sure all of us coming into the Senate for the first time were somewhat intimidated by the shoulders we stood on, by the shoes we had to fill. Well, unlike most of you in these seats, um, my seat had been filled by a woman since the 1980s. I was the first man elected um, in a long time, so the shoes I had to fill had high heels on them. <laughs> and in my first month in office, I asked the three, my three predecessors to gather together, and two of them are with us here today. I just want to thank them. They, they gave me the greatest lunch instruction I ever had that day when we all met, um, along with Christine Kehoe and Dee Dee Alpert, their predecessor, uh, Lucy Calais, who was excommunicated for her views on choice. Um, the, the four of us had a wonderful lunch together. We took this beautiful photo that hangs proudly in my office, both here and in San Diego. And I just want to thank them for everything they've done for me, for this state, and, and for this country. Thank you all. Senator Jackson. Thank you, Madam President. And members, I too uh, rise in support of this moment. Uh, I felt compelled after you mentioned women of the, your stature and of uh, Senator Watson. On behalf of the Short Women's Caucus, I wanted to, uh, to stand and say a few words um, in thanks. Uh, Are you standing, Senator Jackson? I am, believe okay. it or not. <laughs> On my tippy toes, but not in high heels. Too hard to walk in high heels, as uh, many of my male colleagues know. But we do stand, and we do stand on your shoulders. And I know uh, Senator Watson, when I was uh, in the State Commission on the Status of Women many years ago, you were a trailblazer. You were a trailblazer who said, we don't take no for an answer. I have tried to follow that motto, for better and for worse, I might say, but I have tried to, to follow that. And I, Elaine Alquist and Noreen Evans and Ellen Corbett, who just left us recently, your, your shoes are hard to fill and we miss you. And certainly Liz Figueroa, the first Salvadorian ever to be elected to public office in California, perhaps even the nation, who, is, who has been a great spokesperson for those people who's, uh, who have also uh, suffered and come to this country for safe haven, remembering what this country is to us, the offers, the opportunity for equality and justice, and the fact that we as women have been the last to achieve that. I remember I wanted to mention Shirley Chisholm, who was the first woman to run for president of the United States from uh, one of the major parties. She was an African-American woman, and she said, and I remember it then, back many years ago, that her biggest problem was not her race, but her gender, and that we would see, we would see an African-American as president before we would see a woman president. And she was prescient in those days. And so we have heard comments about the number of women that we've had on this, in this august body, from a high of 42, now presently at 30. And it is incumbent upon us to recognize that there are young people up in the in the gallery, and they need to see that there are both men and women here, because women hold up half the sky. We have a responsibility to have our voices heard, and one of the places where it needs to be heard is right here. And I know Christine Kehoe, who served this body well, and Dee Dee Alpert, one of the, one of the calming voices, always finding that middle ground. I still admire that to this day. And Denise DeCheney, with whom um, 
the strength of her understanding of the budget help newbies like me recognize that the budget is also a moral document as well uh, as a financial one. And of course, Sharon Runner, who we expect will be coming back at some point, uh, also a strong voice on behalf of the issues that are so important to us as women. I have a list here. I, I, I wasn't going to use it, but I think by way of illustration, statistically, Statistics show that women, more so than men, need to be asked to run for office. We need permission. I don't know why, but we seem to feel that we do. Uh, it may be why today we only hold 18% of the congressional seats, 20% of U.S. senatorial seats, 10% of the governor's seats, gubernatorial seats, 12% women are mayors of America's uh, largest cities. 24% of state legislative seats are held by women. And as mentioned, currently in California, in the California Senate, we hold 28% of the seats, 23% in the assembly. We are half of the, we hold up half the sky. Our voice is a critical voice to be heard. And the lesson that I hope we take home and that you continue to share as role models for all of us is how important it is that we bring more women to the table. We have life experience that is valuable to everyone. We have a passion and a commitment for issues that is valuable to everyone. And until we are reflected in the halls of power as we are in the workforce and in our homes, we will not have achieved that equality that many of you have fought for, many of you and your families came to this country to seek. It is incumbent upon us that we not only honor all these women today, but we commit to making sure that we see more and more women stepping into the halls of power so that our voice will be heard. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Pro Tem, for putting this wonderful event together. Thank you, Senator Jackson. <laughs> Senator Hueso. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it's a, I also wanted to to weigh in on this issue as the Vice Chair of the California Latino Caucus. First of all, I'd like to welcome all the for former Senate uh, women. Uh, thank you for being here today. It's really an honor to have you here in our chamber once again. Uh, you, you, uh, you honor us with your presence once again on this uh, hallowed hall, hall. I also want to welcome my constituent, uh, Denise Moreno Duchene. Uh, the former senator for the 40th uh, Senate District and still working hard in our community to uh, help make things uh, a better place for the constituents there. Since 1850, since the creation of our state and our constitution, our form of government, only 28 women have served in the Senate. It's a very, very small amount of, of, of women that have been um, privileged to serve in this floor and, and, and if you think of, you know, 165 years and, and to only have 28 women is uh, something that uh, is, is, is left in, in part, part of the, the state's legacy in a way that begs us to do something about that and make a change and, and have a more representative uh, Senate in, in favor of women. Of those 28, 10, 10 have been Latinas. We've had 10 Latinas serve in those 165 years. And uh, we've had some great leaders here in those years in, in the women category. We, we need more of them. But I, I rise uh, to honor them, to honor their contribution to, to our community. And, uh, you know, uh, vow to, to work to, to increase those numbers in the future. And this is such a worthy cause. There, there have been so few that their contributions need to be noted. I, I also want to note that uh, uh, our Senator Wolk has uh, Latino heritage as well. So she should be, in, I'm sure she's included in that group. Uh, so uh, she, has, she has to be added to the number of Latinas. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Way. So uh, we should also uh, note Chief, our Chief Sergeant Deborah Manning, the first woman uh, Chief Sergeant uh, in the history of this, uh, this House.
I am happy to welcome our honored guests, the women senators who have graciously served the California Senate. Today, we are rededicating a room 2040 to all of those senators. Although this room will continue to be the Roseanne Vuich room, hearing room, after our first woman senator, we wanted to recognize the achievements of women in California by including the portraits of these 42 incredible women senators who have served the California State Senate thus far. On this occasion, we recognize our past women senators who are present with here, us here today. That is Senator Dee Dee Alpert, Senator Elaine Alquist, Senator Ellen Corbett, Senator Denise Duchesne, Senator Noreen Evans, Senator Liz Figueroa, Senator Deborah Bowen, Senator Christine Kehoe, Senator Sharon Runner, Congresswoman, Madam Ambassador, and first and foremost, State Senator Diane Watson, Senator Marion Bergenson, Senator Marta Escutia, Senator Teresa Hughes, Senator Betty Carnett, Senator Lucy Calais, Senator Sheila Kuehl, Senator Barbara Lee, Senator Carol Migden, Senator Rebecca Morgan, Senator Gloria Negrete McLeod, Senator Jenny Oropesa, Senator Deborah Ortiz, Senator Gloria Romero, Senator Hilda Solis, Senator Nel Soto, Senator Jackie Spear, Senator Norma Torres, Senator Roseanne Vujic, Senator Mimi Walters, Senator Patricia Wiggins, and Senator Kathy Wright. These 42 women exemplify public service, and each of their careers is indicative of advancement towards gender equality. Now, I want to put this uh, in proper context because I also want to uh, recognize our current senators uh, of the California State Senate, women senators. That is Senator Hannabeth Jackson, the chair of the Legislative Women's Caucus. Senator Jean Fuller, the soon-to-be Republican leader and the first woman to ever be Republican leader of the California State Senate. Senator Kathleen Galgiani, Senator Lonnie Hancock, Senator Connie Leva, Senator Carol Liu, Senator Holly Mitchell, Senator Janet Nguyen, Senator Fran Pavley, and Senator Lois Walk. All of these women, past and present, have really been trailblazers for young women, for women, girls, but not just women and girls, but also for men, young men, young boys, as well as men. When they see powerful women in far powerful positions, moving policies that help improve the human condition irrespective of one's political party, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, whether you're urban or rural or suburban, whether you're coastal, inland or Central Valley, whether you're from Northern California, Central or Southern California. These all women serve as very pow powerful reminders of the struggle they all had to encounter individually as well as collectively. Now, again, to put this in proper context, you need to look back only 39 years. 39 years ago, Roseanne Vujic was elected as the first female senator in 1976. It took 65 years, 65 years since women got the right to vote in the state of California in 1911 for a woman to be elected senator of the California State Senate. And it took 127 years, 127 years since the first time this body was established, this political body back in 18. 49. 1849, 127 years, and after the, the vote was established for women in California in 1911, 65 years. In a way, it's incredible to see Roseanne Vujic spearhead and trailblaze this pathway for women, but also puts this in context of the struggle for women. The laws are there, sometimes they're theoretical in practice. And when we see these incredible women here today, uh, it, it is a testament, me being the youngest child of a single immigrant mother, me being the child of two half-sisters raised by my mother, my aunt, all women. You know, these women here today are truly, truly uh, 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 an inspiration to me as a leader of the state senate. Now lastly, I'd like to say is that Senator Vujic, a woman who was elected from the Central Valley, was a very unassuming woman. And this was a woman who took on the odds because she took on an incumbent, or sh I should say, an assembly member who already was well-established in the Central Valley. And she beat that gentleman. 
and she became, again, the first state senator in 1976. When she was part of this electoral body, this Senate body, don't think that men were still accustomed to the idea of someone from the other gender coming into this institution. And it was very clear, custom and practice, whoever presided over session clearly said, you know, gentlemen, on whatever the issue is, gentlemen, can I have your attention? Gentlemen, the next measure. Gentlemen, for which reason do you rise? And what she would do is she would take this beautiful bell and she would ring it. And that was always a reminder that it's not about gentlemen, that there's a woman. A woman out of 40 senators, there's 39 men, but there's one woman. And that was the incredible rose that broke through the cement, through the concrete, <laughs> that blossomed into the state senate. So with that, it is indeed a deep honor for me to, to share these few words here with each and every one of you. And I have the distinct privilege to introduce one of my colleagues, uh, two of my colleagues, but first, the chair of the Women Legislative Caucus uh, from both houses, the Assembly as well as the Senate, that is Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator DeLeo. What some men will do to get a picture with all these fabulous women, I mean, really. But I want to thank Senate uh, President Pro Tem Kevin DeLeon for uh, recognizing and honoring the contributions of this group of incredible women. You know, I look around and we are all either the first to serve our communities or among the first to have trailblazed in what is frequently a very g difficult uh, environment, whether it's raising money, whether it's recognizing that we are worthy uh, uh, to answer the call, whether we have waited for years to get permission to run, uh, as women so frequently uh, do. We think that we have got to be twice as good in order to get half as far. And this group of women around, uh, surrounding me right now, is an example of women who have been extraordinary. And the hope is as we move uh, future to the future that we will have women who will look in the mirror and say yes I can yes I will I'm going to run I'm going to win I'm going to serve my community I'm going to represent my gender I'm going to represent my generation uh, we're going to make this a better place we're going to lead the the state we're going to lead the nation going forward so um, uh, at this rate however and I, I'm uh, I hate to get down a little bit, but you know we are not moving to the number rep reflective of our representation within the overall community. We are 52% of the population, but we are only 28% uh, of the legislative body. And uh, it is really critical that we encourage more and more women uh, to run for office. And by putting the photographs of these extraordinary women up here in this room, it will hopefully uh, be a reminder as every fourth grade girl and boy uh, comes through this hallway and sees that women are standing toe to toe equally, shoulder to shoulder with their male, male quali uh, colleagues, that the qualities that are those qualities of leadership exist in both genders, in all colors, in all races, in all cultures, because after all, that is what is the state of California, and that's what may has made this state so great. So going forward, uh, we will have these photographs. We will hopefully have more and more women to join our ranks, but in the meantime, I want to thank those women upon whose shoulders I am standing today for their service to this great state and the inspiration they have been to me, I know, and to my colleagues now currently in the legislature. So thank you all very much. Thank you, uh, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. I also, too, want to add, um, uh, 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 echo what you just said, is that as a, a male senator, and as the leader of the Senate body, um, I uh, just don't uh, stand on the shoulders of the male senators uh, that came before me in my district, but I also stand on the shoulders of these great uh, uh, women senators uh, who came before me uh, as well. Again, um, you're not just role models to young girls and to women, but to young boys and, and to men as well too, so thank you for what you do. Um, last, uh, I have the uh, privilege to introduce uh, a wonderful colleague of mine, uh, we've served together, uh, uh, the SAB as well as the Assembly, now we serve together in the California State Senate. She is the Republican leader-elect and will be the first woman uh, in the history of the California State Senate uh, to head up the Republican caucus. That is a Senator Ms. Jean Fuller. Right. 
Senator De Leon, thank you for this day. We appreciate you very much. And all of you women, thank you for coming to spend this time with us. It's so good for us to be with those who've gone before us. It's so important for us to be with those who have served and who have known the challenges that are maybe different but the same than we will experience. And to get to share those differences and those similarities is one of the great, great miracles of this job. And I know that when I first came, many of you were already serving, and you taught me the way to get along with each other and to agree and disagree the way we should. And I hope that that will be continued, and I hope that you will all continue to share those tips with us. And I feel very privileged to be going forward in this role. Each of us has been first in a different way. Each of you know what that way is. Each of you have found within your heart the courage to go forward and take on that challenge, even though perhaps it wouldn't have been the thing you chose for yourself at that time. And when that challenge came, each of you have been shining stars and rose again to be above what you could have been and what the others who went before you were because you were different. And you made that difference a strength. And I today just feel so proud to stand on your shoulders. As a small child in a very small town <laughs> in the middle of the Central Valley, well, certainly no one, including myself, ever imagined, ever imagined that I would stand in this room, much less to be allowed at the podium. And yet, I had models. I had people who went before. I had someone to follow. And I thank you for that, and I hope you will continue to lead. And I'm very grateful for the pictures that will help us all, as we sit in this room, to think about the contributions of others, the greatness that we present in ourselves if we share with others, and how we can grow together. Thank you. Now, I would be remiss if I did not recognize uh, several uh, members of the state legislature, the state senate to be exact, who have come in solidarity uh, of these incredible women. Uh, to my right, that is Senator Jim Bell, right there, mm -hmm. Senator Richard Pan, uh, Senator Wachowski, Senator Leno, as well as our majority leader, Senator Bill Mani. Welcome, bienvenidos, you know. Senator, Sir. Senator, Sir. Uh, Senator Sir. Byron Schur as well, Sir. yes, uh, and Senator Jim Nielsen as well too. Welcome, you know. Uh, to this wonderful event. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Women, Women power! power. Yeah. Yeah.